Hey guys, Jessica here with the Pet Parenting Reset. Thank you for returning to my channel. If you are new here, I am a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. And today we are talking about five ways that you can help reduce the chemical load in your pet. If you're watching this video, you probably are already aware of all of the chemicals in our environment, especially in our homes. Now, these chemicals are really, really high in our dogs, in our cats, in young children. When we take into account how much smaller they are than us as grown adults, these chemicals build up in their bodies that much quicker and are that much more concentrated simply because their bodies are so much smaller. Also, our cats and our dogs, their paw pads are constantly on surfaces, whether it's a counter surface or a floor surface, whatever it may be, they are constantly absorbing whatever chemicals we just used to clean that surface. So they are really, really susceptible to overwhelming chemical load. And certainly there have been studies done to prove that chemical load in some dogs and cats, uh, they were studied specifically in New York State where dogs and cats are confined indoors a lot more because in New York City, I, I should say, in New York City, um, there's not a whole lot of green, right? So they stay indoors, they're on concrete, they're on pavement, they are um, on surfaces that are regularly cleaned very, very often, and their chemical load far exceeds maximum um, known to be okay, which to me is still <laughs> still too much in the body. So there, I will link in the description below. I have done videos in the past showing you how to make your own cleaners that are chemical free. Um, personally, that is what I use, but we know that these chemical loads in the body for our dogs and our cats, they are endocrine disruptors, right? So we are seeing a lot of uh, negative impacts on the endocrine system. Cats, uh, we know, are being diagnosed at insane rates with hyperthyroidism. And along with endo the endocrine system being disrupted, we're seeing infertility as well as immune system dysregulation. So according to Dr. Becker, some of the best ways to avoid these chemicals, specifically PFCs, which are perfluorochemicals, hopefully I'm saying that right, those are big words, but most commonly called PFCs, as well as PFAS. These uh, chemicals that they were called PFCs are now commonly referred to as PFAS, so you might wanna look for both. Uh, according to the Environmental Working Group, these are very common in products that are stain resistant, waterproof, and nonstick. So here are some of the things that you can do in addition to making your own chemical free home cleaners, which again, I will have linked in the description. These are things you can do to help reduce the chemical load in your home and for your pets. Find products that have not been pre-treated and skip the stain repellent option when you purchase new carpeting. Cut back on fast food and carry out food because the wrappers that fast food and carry out food come in often are made with these PFAS chemicals. When you are purchasing clothes, you wanna make sure they don't state that they are Gore-Tex, G-O-R-E-T-E-X, or Teflon. And you also wanna be wary of fabrics that are stain repellent or water repellent. Avoid nonstick pans and other kitchen utensils. Instead, use stainless steel and cast iron. When you pop popcorn, make sure you are doing it the old fashioned way because when you buy bagged popcorn, the inside of that bag is often lined with PFAS chemicals. Provide chlorella to your pets to help flush out any toxins that are in their body. Make sure you are filtering both your and your pet's drinking water. Keep your pet away from any outdoor areas that may have pesticide, herbicide, or even fertilizers. If you do walk through an area and you just are not sure if they have been, maybe a common area where you live and you're not sure if it's been treated with any pesticides or herbicides or if there's any fertilizer uh, put down, what you can do when you get home is clean your dog's feet and do a quick foot soak for them. Uh, make sure the indoor air quality in your home is tip top. So again, as I mentioned before, stop using those chemical cleaners, make your own. I have some linked in the description below. Also avoid using any fragrance, any uh, plugins, candles that have lead wicks, any aerosols, anything to make your home smell better generally is very heavily chemical laden. You may also want to invest in a home air purifier, especially if you, you or your pet have severe environmental allergies. 
when choosing a bed for your pet, make sure you are choosing chemical-free organic cotton pet beds. And only use chemical flea and tick repellent heartworm medication when absolutely necessary. There are other videos on my channel. I will link them below. Uh, also on my podcast, I'm going to be doing an episode about that. So make sure you are subscribed to the podcast. You're following wherever you get your podcast. It is the Pet Parenting Reset. Search for it. And you can also go to the petparentingreset.com and listen there if you prefer not to use a streaming service. So these are some of the things you can do to reduce the chemical load for both you and your pets. And some, some a very small fraction <laughs> of information as to why it is so important. Thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate you watching. I know you are a wonderful pet parent just because you're seeking out this information. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you're not watching this on rumble i hope you take a moment i will link my rumble channel in the description below that is my preferred place for you to watch all the videos that i put up give your pets some extra love from me today and with that i'll see you guys next time bye